Hey everyone, so uh, we are moving on to chapter 15 uh, lecture, which is over the topics, interfaces and generics. And um, I always like to start off with why these topics are important. Uh, if you've li listened to any of my lectures in the past, I always start with why. I think that's the most important question to answer, um, more than the how or anything else. Um, because if you understand why something is important, then... Um, uh, then, then you'll care. You'll, you'll care to understand the topic. You know, if I just jump right in and start explaining how to do something, um, you might not care. Uh, so, so understanding the why uh, gets you to buy in uh, to its importance. Um, generics, if we're starting with generics and uh, understanding why generics are important, um, well, the first thing I'll say about generics is that we already have used generics. Um, and we're just going to um, dive a little bit deeper into uh, what, what that means. And when we've used generics um, specifically, um, we've used a list of items uh, and what we put in these angle brackets uh, allows us to have like a list of ints, for example. And so what a generic is, again, I should, I should start with why. This is what a generic is. A generic is a data type that is um, basically allows you to um, substitute other types. Uh, you might see it as a list of T. And so this would be like, this is a template item. And, and it just allows you to have a flexible type of list. You could have a list of, uh, of ints, a list of string. So as, as to answer the question of why generics are important, uh, they're just a very commonly used um, tool that allows a little bit of flexibility in our data types. Um, you know, we could have a list of uh, if we had a car class, we could have a list of cars, right? And so the, the, the generic, again, is what goes inside these angle brackets, and it allows us to have flexibility in uh, what um, types can be in a, in a list of items or a collection of items, okay? Um, and so that's generics. Uh, basically, the, the why they're important is uh, they're, they're super common and, and you're going to come across them and they uh, offer uh, some flexibility in our code. Uh, why interfaces? Um, interfaces allow you to enforce behaviors on your class. And so um, what that does is essentially gives you a blueprint for a, a behavior um, to, again, if you have a class, whatever the class may be, whatever the thing may be, um, it allows you to say, okay, this class must do this thing. Again, interfaces allow you to enforce behaviors and when I say behaviors I'm talking about methods uh, so it allows you to in, enforce behaviors or methods on your class and why that's important well um, you want methods in an ideal world um, that you understand you know you want methods that you understand how to to code you know one one method was two string um, that we we talked about in the last lecture and two string what's what's good about the two string method is that generically you should understand what two string does two string takes your object and returns data about the object so if you had a like car c1 equals new car and then you said c1 two string this two string method Without even knowing, you know, anything about this class, 
I should just know that toString um, returns data about uh, the car. You might not know what what data, okay? Um, so that's nice because you can look at a, a method and generally understand what it does. Well, interfaces do the same thing. Um, for example, if you have a custom class, um, you might want to see, okay, I've, I've got this car class, right? And I want to see if two cars, if one car, C1 dot equals C2. Well, through interfaces, we can put an interface on our car class that will make us construct or make us build this equals method, right? Um, and so that allows us to compare car objects against one another. And so, again, trying to stay big picture here, why are interfaces important? It allows us to enforce behaviors on our classes and the more frequently these methods are enforced on different classes the easier it is for us programmers to get used to those methods and understand um, understand understand what's going on without actually getting into behind the code and looking at you know the implementation of how they wrote the equals method okay so again uh, what is an interface? It's a way to uh, enforce a behavior on a class. Um, and why is that important? Well, because if enough classes enforce that behavior, then you understand that behavior without uh, a little bit more naturally, without like, okay, what does this code actually do behind, behind the scenes? Okay, like for example, uh, another one is... Um, Actually, we already said to string, right? You could say, okay, I've got an int my val, uh, my val equals 10. And then you say my val to string. Like generally, you just know what to string does uh, in this scenario because you understand to string. Um, so that's what an interface is, that's what generics are. <coughs> kind of looking at some objectives and I think it's a good idea to write, get right into some code. Um, distinguish between an interface and an abstract class, I do want to do that. Um, kind of talk about what is an abstract class again. Now, in our last lecture on chapter 14, I briefly touched on abstract classes, but I want to go through that again. Um, So briefly, I'll talk about an abstract class and then compare that to an interface. So I'm going to go back and just do a little bit of review. Okay, and, and our last lecture was on inheritance. So we wound up making these parent classes and these child classes and you know, animal would be this class that um, you could inherit from. And I ended up showing you uh, auto implemented properties like uh, animal ID each animal has a name and an age and so we've got these properties and methods uh, so we got this behavior this method and we've got these properties all of the animal class and um, 
with inheritance, I talked about the, uh, the higher you are in the hierarchy, the higher you are in the hierarchy, the more generic the classes become. Eventually, uh, the classes may become so generic that the only purpose they exist for is inheritance. In other words, you would never create an object from the class, from that class. You would only use it to inherit from. Okay, in this scenario, in this scenario right here, where you go up the hierarchy so high that it no longer makes sense for your for your software to create an instance of that class, you can mark mark the class as abstract. And when you do that, public abstract class, okay, this all still works the same. Um, the only difference now is that if I were to come over into my form and I were to try and create an animal, this is the form's constructor, animal a1 equals new animal, you'll see a little error message here that says, ah, you mark this class as abstract so you cannot create an instance of that type, right? So if I were to kind of come back into here and I were to just remove this keyword, that, that goes away. So abstract doesn't allow you to create an instance. Um, all right, so, so that's just a little bit of a review of, of abstract classes. Now abstract classes have properties and they have methods. Now eventually you might create, because this class is abstract, you might come into here and add another class called dog that a dog is an animal so you inherit the animal class and now we can come in here to say dog is a new dog and now because you inherited the properties you got dog age is an old dog and you got the dog's name so on and so forth, and you can do uh, uh, a walk, but because walk returns a string, you might say string data equals. Okay, now walk would actually, you know, if we kind of go into here, the creature walks forward, right? So that's what would be stored inside of this string variable, it would say the dog walks forward. Now I didn't, you know, put that into a label. Of course, we could do that real quick. And uh, da, 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 this is called, I guess, just to kind of flush out the the small example. So when the form loads, it's going to put label results dot text. Yeah, I don't think it likes. I don't think it likes doing all this in the constructor. I don't typically do that. I'm trying to do all this work in the constructor, and typically you want to do it on like a button click or something. Uh, so I don't think that this is running. So let's do this on a button click instead. Typically, yeah, you don't want to do all that in the constructor. So that just builds the form. We really don't want to do anything else besides kind of get the form set up. 
in the constructor. That's why that wasn't working. But if we do it on a button click instead, you see the creature walks forward. So we got a little bit of inheritance going on. Um, we could override that, right? Because walk is a uh, public string walk because we want to write a more specific walk method. Now that we have a specific dog, we could override that. And it's going to say uh, use the new keyword if it's hiding was intended. So remember, uh, virtual is the keyword since we're overriding this. Uh, we're going to mark that as virtual, and then in which case we can come over here and say override. Now when the dog walks, debug, start without debugging. The dog walks slowly. Um, one thing that I didn't show, let's see, we got animal. Let me let me do something else here real quick. And this is, um, da, 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 let's add a cat. And let's have the cat. override walk the cat walks quickly so the dog walks slowly the cat walks quickly so you got these two different animals Okay, c1.walk, so obviously now, all right, the cat walks quickly. Okay, now one thing that I did not show, and I probably should have, check this out, this is actually pretty neat. Um, Because both dog and cat, because both dog and cat inherit from animal, you can upcast your objects into their parents. So because a dog is an animal and because a cat is an animal, both, uh, both of these objects c1 and d1 d1 could be passed into this method and that that would be causing a cast or a conversion um, and then we could say label result dot text equals a1 dot walk so this is this is really cool so this is kind of a fun word called polymorphism totally fun word whoa all right um and you know i always talk about data hiding being an object oriented uh concept that you should be familiar with polymorphism is in as another object oriented uh concept or principle Okay, that, that is discussed frequently. Okay, so what is polymorphism? Polymorphism, an object can behave differently depending on the type it references. On the, when I say type, I'm talking about data type it references. So A1 is our object. 
A1 can behave differently depending on the data type it references. So, okay, so let's do this. Let's, let's call do something and pass in our dog, D1. Because we're passing in the dog object, the dog object is being cast up into an animal. Again, that's called an upcast. Any, any child object could be upcast into its parent. And then we're gonna do A1.walk. So of course, when we do a1.walk here, the dog walks slowly. So in this instance, a1.walk behaved like a dog because the dog was upcast into the animal. The same code though, the same code, a1.walk can behave differently if instead, instead of passing the dog, we pass the cat. Now, first off, notice that this works. We can pass a cat into an animal or we can pass a dog into an animal. Okay, again, that's that's called upcasting, okay? And again, what, what this is a demonstration of is polymorphism, which is just a fun word, literally uh, means many forms. That's what polymorphism means. It means that this one code, this one line of code can take on many forms. It can behave differently depending on the object that it references. A1 really references a dog object. And when a dog walks, it does one thing, and when a cat walks, it does something else. So this time we passed in the cat, and you, and here you got the cat walks quickly. Probably the button shouldn't say walk the dog. The, the button should say walk the animal. So again, really, really just kind of a, a cool demonstration of, of a, a topic that we uh, might have skipped over, uh, overlooked up until this point. Okay, back to the point of abstract classes, okay? Now, the one thing about abstract classes that's very different than interfaces, notice that in abstract classes, I, I can have... Um, Methods can have a default implementation. Okay, so here there is a method called walk, and that method does have an implementation. In other words, aka method bodies can have statements. Um, same thing with our properties. You know, these are auto-implemented properties, but if I wanted to have a, uh, not an auto-implemented property, but kind of how we first learn properties, um, private int if the value is greater than, for whatever reason, our animals, you know, uh, we're not gonna have animals that have greater than four legs. We're not, we're not gonna allow it in our house. So if, if the value that's passed into the, uh, to the num legs property is greater than four, uh, we're gonna set num legs equal to four. If they try and tell us that there's more than four legs, else, <laughs> the whole point of me flushing this out is that our properties can also have statements in abstract classes properties can also have statements or property or uh, uh, blocks of code. Okay, and um, you might guess that interfaces, since, since you can have statements, 
inside of your, your methods and your properties in abstract classes, you might guess that you cannot have that in, in uh, interfaces and you would be correct, okay? So a little bit of review, also a little bit of some, some new stuff in here. Um, but that's uh, inheritance. And the next thing that we're going to talk about is uh, an interface. Now, uh, in C Sharp, um, there are a bunch of built-in interfaces. And so before we create our own interfaces, uh, I just want to show you uh, some of the built-in interfaces um, the one that I'm going to use this this morning and in this example um, is iComparable. All right, and and um, throughout our labs we'll use iEnumerable and iEnumerator, and we'll use a few other ones here. But I just wanted you to get the idea of okay, um, what is an interface and how is it used, and and really how is it useful. Um, and again, then we'll kind of go back to abstract classes once we create our own interface and we'll see how they're different uh, than abstract classes. Okay, so again, I just want to kind of start off with iComparable. Um, and so let's go into I just want to maybe do this on animal. Now So on, on uh, a class, you put the colon, and then the, what first comes after the colon is the parent that you inherit from. But, but in this case, we, animal doesn't inherit from a parent other than, other than the implicit um, object class. And so since we're not inheriting, we can then... Uh, so the language here is you inherit from a parent and you implement an interface. Implement. Okay, there we go. You inherit from a single parent, which means things are passed down. When you inherit non private members are passed down to the child class. When you implement an interface, a behavior is enforced onto the class. Now right away, you see this doesn't compile. And if you look at the error message, it says animal does not implement the member compare to. If you kind of read that, it says I comparable dot compare to. Show potential fixes, hit control dot, control dot. It tells you just go ahead and click on implement interface. Once you do that, notice that goes away. And what, what did it do? Well, here it put in this method for us. This method is called compare to. It accepts in any generic object and returns an int. Return negative one if one object is less than the other. Return a positive one if uh, one object is greater than the other. Return a zero if they are equal. So the, the default here, it kind of says this little throw not implemented exception. Okay, you kind of delete that. And so here's, here's the idea, okay? The idea is we need to write this compare to method that can be used to compare two animals. And so the question becomes, well, how do you compare animals? Do you compare them by their name? Do you compare them by their ID? Do you compare them by their age or some combination of all three of those things? 
Like when you're when you're comparing objects, it's kind of like a blank canvas. You get to define how is one object greater than the other. And there's there's kind of a there's there's two ways. So this if if you can imagine this being called, it would be something like so the call to this method would be a1 dot compare to a2. Okay, so there's essentially two animals, animal a1 and animal a2. Um, by the way, when you implement this method, array dot sort will use it when sorting your custom objects okay so I'll, I'll demonstrate this all right so um, there's there's basically two objects there's a1 and then there's this object that gets passed into obj so it, to represent a1 a1 is the, the first object. A2 is OBJ. Well, A1 is represented by this. We can say if this, again, this being A1, if this dot age, if the first animal's age is less than So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast OBJ into an animal, and that's going to be A2. If this dot age, being uh, A1's age, is less than A2, which is the second object, A2 dot age, We're going to set the return val equal to zero. It doesn't really matter. We can leave that blank. Return val equals negative one. Else if a two dot, well, we could say this dot age is greater than a two dot age return val equals a positive one else return val equals zero so this method is either returning a negative one under this scenario returning a zero if they're equal or returning a positive one if the other one is greater. So if it's less than, it's negative one. If it's greater than, it's it's positive one. Otherwise, it's zero. And we're going to to return um, ba -ba 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 -ba, return val. Okay. So let's think about this. This class implements this interface. Because we implement the interface we have to enforce a behavior. That behavior was this compare to method. What does this compare to do? Well, this compare to is automatically used as part of array.sort. Array.sort will call the compare to object to help us sort our animals by their age. By the way, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this so this is not abstract, so I can actually create animals and demonstrate this. All right. So let's kind of uh, comment out this code right here. Let's have a animal my zoo equals new animal array 
with four animals. My zoo sub zero. And I'm just going to give them their ages. Uh, the first animal mix up the ages so we'll go high then we'll go low we're just putting animals in our array by the way and I've said this before when we're not using the constructor, these are called object initializers. Right, we're, we're using the properties to put data into our objects. Let's go in the middle here. Okay, so we have uh, an array of animals. Let's go ahead and do array.sort my zoo. I'll do a shorthand for loop, which is called for each, right? Um, for each animal a in my zoo label result dot text plus equals a dot name so we're looping through the animals in my zoo and by the way, this shorthand for each kind of replaces the longer for loop. This is essentially doing the same thing. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll do it this way first. My zoo sub i dot name. All right. Piece all this together, click run. So Elliot has the lowest age, Zig is next, uh, Tam Tam is next, and Fido is next. So you can see that to compare these animals, we did so by comparing their age. And then when we sorted our animals, keep in mind that sort automatically calls this compare to now you could still you could still compare two animals without calling sort you could say animal you know a you could do this you could you could write this method manually right this this is would now work okay so this is kind of cool because what this does is it allows us to use some some methods that we can all get familiar with to do certain tasks with our custom objects. Um, compare to method belongs to this interface. By writing this I comparable, uh, it makes you write this compare to method. Understanding what it does, you can kind of, uh, you know, as far as 
understanding you got two objects. One object is the keyword this. The other object can be casted into the correct type. And once it's passed into the method, cast that into the correct type, and then you can compare these two things. Okay, and that's kind of a normal format uh, for these for these interfaces. Okay, implement the interface, and then write the method. Uh, put the method body in here, uh, as far as what the method needs to do, um, and then and then use that method. Uh, let's see, let me comment this out and let me bring this in and this should do the same thing. Um, Elliot, Zig, Tam Tam, Fido. Yeah. Um, so this this is a these two things like for each, um, I believe I covered that in the in the loops chapter where for each is your shorthand for loop that allows you to have a collection of things, whether that's a list or whether that's an array um, or a dictionary. You can have a collection and then loop over each item in the collection each time a. You know, the first time through the loop, A is the first animal. The second time through the loop, A is the second animal, third animal, and so forth. That's a nice shorthand feature there. Okay, so that's that's how you go about using one of the built-in one of the built-in um, interfaces. Uh, you might notice the naming convention for interfaces are capital I, um, whereas our parents you know for inheritance they don't you know they don't have that convention where you start with the capital i so in c sharp you know if i kind of come back into the powerpoint and i look i clonable i comparable i convertible i disposable all of these interfaces um uh, start with that naming convention okay and you know you're not gonna you're not going to use all of these nor you know, I don't, I'm not going to ask you to memorize them. You know, I comparable is one that I demonstrated. Um, tomorrow in class, we'll go over I enumerable and I enumerator. Um, and so we'll, we'll definitely use, um, I think we go over I dictionary as well. Um, and that's, again, these are just built in interfaces that, that are common to use. Now, as we uh, jump forward in this lecture a little bit, it's worth saying these interfaces, notice I enumerable, but it has a generic. And so it's kind of, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, it's kind of confusing um, because these interfaces were implemented in, let's just say, you know, .NET version 2. And then they came out with a whole nother set of interfaces that are the same interfaces, but now they support generics. Um, so it's, it, it can be confusing because, you know, here's another I dictionary, but you notice the brackets, the angle brackets at the end. Um, and so, you know, again, we'll, we'll cover that a little bit more once we get into generic, but realize a little bit later in the slides, you see the same interfaces just with the generic uh, angle brackets at the end. I enumerable, well, if I come back here, uh, here's uh, I enumerable that's not generic. Um, and so, you know, here's I comparable that's not generic. Um, and then I'll show you how to implement the, the generic version of that interface um, and kind of the difference there. All right, 45 minute lecture already. Um, let's go ahead and take a, a short break. I'll pause the recording. Okay, uh, resuming the recording here. Um, what I wanted to do next, again, there are built-in interfaces and we're gonna use several of these built-in interfaces, but again, as it goes, is you implement the interface and then, and then you implement the method that you have to overwrite 
um, uh, or not that you have to override. There's no override keyword here, but you have to implement the method and then call the method. Um, okay, let's do an example of our own interface. So we're gonna say add a new item. I don't know if there's an interface. I think there's the option for an interface in here somewhere. Of course, there's not. There it is, interface, okay. I ability. Um, because there's a lot of gamers in here, we're gonna make this interface called iAbility. And the idea here is um, if you, whether you play games or not, doesn't, doesn't really matter, is that uh, in a lot of games you've got these champions with uh, like uh, four abilities. One for, one, uh, the Q ability when the user presses Q. So on and and it's been so long since I've played one of these games. I'm, I mean, I'm even doubting, aren't these the typical keys that are used for your abilities? Like, uh, I used to play yeah, I thought so. Okay, all right. Um, and so the idea here is that we're going to enforce these methods on our class. And so we might have a public um, string Q ability. And uh, the modifier public is not valid. Okay, you'll notice here, I tried putting an access modifier on it. It's like, eh, eh, can't have an access modifier. Now, a couple things here about our, so in an interface, you only declare the method signature, right? In this case, you know, the access modifier is not part of that. Uh, the return data type, and the name of the method may be in some parameters. In this case, no parameters. So I'll have another one. So now the champion implements the iAbility interface. It says, you know, you must implement the interface, Q ability, so on and so forth. I'm gonna hit a control enter, control dot, I should say, control dot, implement all the interfaces. Okay, now you get, now you get a base implementation of, okay, you know, this is the generic champion Um, I used to have, again, I'm going to, I'm kind of old here. Um, give me an actual champion in one of these games. Uh, let's see. Cause I used to play League of Legends. I think there was, Hecarim was his name. Timo, <laughs> Reddington, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So Hecarim is a champion, and he can also can implement I ability. Um, but because it's being inherited, right? These methods would be inherited by the parent. Um, let's see, 
Let's see if I take that off. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take that off. So the champion, like for example, we could just put in a couple. Let me just do, do something like that. So, so I wanted to show that not only can we inherit, we inherit Hecarim is a champion. So that's inheritance, but we can also implement uh, I ability. And because we implement it here, now let's do control dot, bring in all these interfaces. This forces our champion Hecarim to have an E ability. Uh, in which case I don't, you know, um, You know, I don't know. It's it's been so long. I don't remember his. Uh, R was the ultimate, I think. So by implementing this interface, it forces our champion to have all of these methods. It, in other words, you couldn't build it without. And any other champion that we have would also implement the interface and essentially be forced to have all of these abilities. Um, There you go. So just to show you um, the difference, again, just a couple things to note. Number one, the naming convention. Number two, there's no method bodies here. All they are are uh, method signatures. And kind of the same thing if I wanted to do um, a property here, I could do a property. Um, properties da, 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 da. trying to scroll up just to show it here's what a property looks like um, so again there's no access modifier just the return type the name and then get and set with semicolons on them um, so I'm trying to think of a useful um, I, um, I'm just making this up. I, I don't know what save would do, but this is uh, what a property would look like inside of an interface. And then ha this would have to implement the save property. and actually fill this out. Okay. So that is how we create our own interfaces and how we implement our own interfaces. Again, I showed briefly how to inherit you can have a single uh, you can only inherit from a single parent however you can implement many interfaces 
So in this case, we have our class. It inherits from champion. Champion is our parent. It implements iAbility, but we can also implement iComparable. Okay, so that's that's how it works in C Sharp. Um, is that you can have you could implement many interfaces, but you can only inherit from a single parent. Other languages, I think a C plus plus. I think uh, C plus plus you are allowed to have multiple parents, um, but that's uh, obviously different in C Sharp. Uh, and what what they do allow you to do is implement from multiple interfaces. So there's our compare to. Okay. Uh, for the sake of sanity, I'm going to break this lecture up into a couple different pieces. And so, um, you know, we'll, we'll break this first lecture up. We'll stop here at about an hour timestamp. Okay. And I will continue this um, a little bit tomorrow. But I think uh, just having so much theory, so much new theory in the last couple of days, I think we're going to just take an opportunity to break this up. Okay, so I'll stop the recording here.